predators. I just want to go quickly over this because I want to bring the birds out. There's your night predators, and I got to tell you, the best protection against predators is a secure coop. And you know how to do that because you're going to secure it from drafts. So I'm not going to go into that much more. Of course, there's a lot of hibernation, but you know when they come out, you can see the traps. And when those birds, when the animals start to come out of hibernation, I, I keep a little closer eye on my flock. Uh, these solar guards, um, everyone around me had bear problems. They didn't come into mine. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, no, they don't go after the chickens that I know of. They just eat the feed. But, but what I found is, is I put an old CD uh, right behind this. This is a night guard solar. And when that reflected, it really reflected. And I'll put one uh, by, the, by the pop hole, put one on, on either side of the chicken door. And um, I also, since we had a bear in our neighborhood that was really marauding, uh, I put one at the bear eye level. And the, the theory is it, it looks like a reflective eye. And they'll, they'll just they'll think it's another predator, and they won't. I really like these. I, I, I've gone through several. Feed care is really important in the winter and summer, but it's um, you see the commercial birds never live long enough to need a pedicure, but your birds probably will. So see how see how long this toenail is here. Now what does that do to this bird's ability to scratch? You know, literally, it's sort of scraping. It's not scratching. So what you need to do is just take, like you with your fingernails, just trim that back to there, to right about there. I take off about till you see the quick. If it starts bleeding a little bit, you know, just don't do any more. It's okay. They're not going to. And with roosters, I've seen more and more roosters where they get the spurs so long they can't even walk. They're clicking themselves. So so you can either uh, dremel them off, or you can take them off with a file or or a, a nail clippers, like like for sheep or goats. Um, but the, I'm going to show you in a second. But the thing is, if these get too long and they can get razor sharp, they, I've literally seen slices down the hen's sides where when the rooster mounted the hen, he was literally stabbing her. And it can kill a hen. So you, you, we're, as more and more people are getting chickens, we, we need to understand that we've we got to take care of the rooster's spurs. And I love roosters. I mean, they've got a place. I don't want to have my flock without roosters. I don't have time to go into it now, but, but they, they really do serve a service. So this is how you take the, 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 the spur completely off, is you just get some pliers, and you put it at the base, and you turn a quarter turn. That's it. And it slides right out, just like off a sleeve. And this is what's left. And does a rooster scream and shout and pout up and down and pull its feathers out? No. It just goes, oh. And you put it down, it goes, and it's like it never even happened. I mean, you it's the it, you actually turn it. Turn it. You crank it. Wow. And I understand from, <laughs> yeah, it's on YouTube to show you how. And, and um, it's, it's no big deal. Now, this kind of leaves him at risk. You know, if you've got foxes or something in the area that, I mean, they, they use that. They'll come and go, whap, 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 whap. they do it like a, like a sword. So, so if, he, if he needs to protect something, you may just want to trim them back. But if you find they're just too, way too long, it does grow back. It does grow back. And it does not bleed that much. That's about the whole extent it bled. So. Combs, this is frostbite. Um, roosters, it's, it, or, and this, well, Roosters, it's more common because they can't put their head under their wings. So this is, this is pretty common. It's also kind of turned black. Then later on, this is feet frostbite. This, this hen will probably, probably lose her toes. That They just drop off. And frostbite can be so bad, their whole, their whole leg will drop off. So you want to treat this. Probably the best prevention for frostbite is what we've already talked about with the coops. You, you want to get them draft free. Draft, drafts are big. And then keep, keep the area dry. Here's how frostbite looks after it's healed. You can see the toes are gone and uh, the dubbed. It looks like the little points are dubbed on the, on that top. So to treat it, well, preventing frostbites, I do. If I know it's going to be really cold, I will put a uh, uh, an ointment on the combs of the roosters uh, because it just keeps water from sitting on, from developing on that rooster. He's hot, right? He's expiring. So if you've got a really moist place, it'll, it'll, con you'll, it'll condensate right on their comb. So if you've got that uh, petroleum or, or some sort of cream or something, it just rolls off, and that helps keep it from frostbite. So treating frostbite, um, same as you do for people. It, you you do, do not add heat to it. What you want to do is bring the bird in, get it dry, and then just let it slowly acclimate to, to, to the normal temperature. Uh, you, don't want to, you don't want to add a heat to it that'll, that'll, because there are crystals 
in that tissue. And those crystals uh, have to sort of melt and, and then, then the body reabsorb it. So, so, so you want to warm the tissue really slow. No additional heat, no, no hair dryers, no heating pads. Just, just do not massage it because the, the, the structure, cell structure is so delicate, it'll rupture the cells. So basically just bring the bird in, give it a soft, if it's a feet, give it a soft towel or something to, to be on and let it just acclimate to room, room temperature. Don't re-expose it to freezing and thawing. If it's a really bad frostbite, because that'll, that'll cause more damage to it. Like those roosters that were just there, I wouldn't bring them in. They're, they're going to acclimate fine. But if I have a really bad case where it's brown and, and like the, that's down pretty low, I'd be worried about infection and I'd, I'd bring them in. And the feet, the, like those feet, I would bring that. They might be able to be saved. I don't know, but that wasn't my chicken. Um, don't break any blisters. That's kind of nature's band-aids. It performs a little cushion there. As, uh, so leave the, and, and make sure that they can get rehydrated. I usually put a B-complex in their water and make uh, little some electrolytes. Uh, and don't try to cut off or pick off the dead tissue or the scabs. Just leave them. Uh, the other thing you want to do is, for the recovery, keep them in a room that's probably cooler. Uh, you don't want to put them out during the night or bring, you want to keep them kind of steady state temperature wise. So, so we talked about the acclimation and that's, that's pretty important. Um, if I had a rooster that was really badly, badly frostbite bit, but in, in January, I'd probably keep them inside till March and until it he really healed over and it could acclimate back out. You might want to keep them separate from others because they will peck at it. They'll pick at those toes or they'll pick at the scabs. And um, you want to monitoring. If their waddles are frostbitten and they've got a little lip that they've got to go over and it hits that waddle, um, that might keep them from eating. So you might want to have a little shallow plate for them to be able to get their food off of. Uh, feet, Epsom salt soak is, is pretty good. Um, if the toes fall off, they fall off. And OK. Here's the lice. If you, if you see, if you look at the feathers and there's little dusty things, it looks like a, a lacing, that slice. They get form in there pretty thick. Yeah. So here's what we've covered. This is what I've, I've gone over a lot, I know, but, but uh, the, just to review, we've talked about breed tolerant characteristics, the body size, the comb size. Um, egg production is big because, I mean, most of you keep baked chickens for eggs by far. When you get further on, you realize how valuable they are for garden helpers. I'd keep mine now even if it weren't for eggs. Uh, coop winterizing, winter feeding, lighting, health considerations, and probably the most common problem is health bite, health frost, frostbite. The chickens in you training series, um, if you just put your name on that pad that went around, we'll notify you the next class. Uh, the very first class went international, I'm pleased to say. We had students from Australia and one from Canada, and now we'll be giving, giving one starting up, I think it's September 28th, and there are other, others that are coming along too. Um, other classes. Now here's our guarantee and I am so proud because every single participant in these classes has said yes absolutely we met the guarantee. We guarantee that by the end of taking this series that you will understand you may not have the experience or the dirt on the field notice but you will understand how to feed yourself and your family for the rest of your life. That's our guarantee and we stand by it. Not too subtle is it? <laughs> <laughs> so here's my contact information, book signing over at the bookstore, and I'm going to bring these chickens out, but until I do, well, I'm going to say something, you say, end with you. May the flock be with you. <laughs> Thank you, chicken ears. Okay. <laughs> Thank you so much. You're great audience. Oh, one, one thing before, this is a, I want to show you this particular guy for winter. This is a, a naked neck bantam. He was, this is my surprise, but notice, notice his neck here, literally how, give me your neck. See how it's like a little vulture neck? And, and notice how this fur here, this, these feathers, can you see that, see the feathers? So what this guy does in the winter, and he's got a little, little monk crew cut, little monk. So what they do is they, they hunker down real low so that, that that neck is completely covered with the feathers there. That's, that's <laughs> so anyway, that's, that's the naked. It's not my favorite breed. This is a little bantam. It was given to me kind of as a, I slipped in with some buff shot eclair bantams, but that's, this is a buff, buff, uh, buff naked neck. Yeah. Well, you know, there, there's a reason uh, 
Chickens are vultures. I mean, they, they, they're scavenging. They're meant to scavenge. And it used to be winter care. You see these in the old agri agricultural books. I, I collect them. It's just some, something I do. But they would literally kill a pig or, or find a deer. And they'd take the carcass out to the, to the, to the run. And the chickens would feed off of them uh, all, all winter long. That was part of their, their carcass. So, so they evolved from a, a bird, evolved from a dinosaur. Oh, well, chickens, yes. You are looking here, a cousin of Tyrannosaurus rex right here. I mean, they evolved from dinosaurs. It's very clear from that. Yeah, that is a wow. You little dinosaur, you. And I got to tell you, there are some times when I'm in, I work in my office and my, my window, my office window is right, on both sides. I can see right out to the run. And sometimes I'll hear a noise and I'll go, I'm glad I know it's my rooster because it sounds like what I would imagine a dinosaur sounding like. <laughs> it's, it's pretty scary, really.